All right, Tasha, let's talk about this very, very bullish call. $2,000 a share by 2027. You're raising your price target when a number of analysts on the street slashed their price targets because they were worried about margin pressure. What are they missing? Well, I think the concerns over margin pressure are very short-term oriented. Um, you know, we've heard Tesla say this, but we've actually modeled the opportunity in robo-taxis and autonomy. And if you look at the future of, you know, Tesla vehicles that are capable becoming uh, robo-taxi enabled, you know, earning a recurring revenue stream at what we think will be uh, software as a service like margins. Uh, this is an amazing potential for Tesla. It'll definitely be, you know, the highest return on investment per battery produced as we've analyzed in our new report up on our website. Um, so I, I think that, you know, Again, this this will totally change Tesla's margin structure in the future. They mentioned on the earnings call that they're prioritizing getting cars out on the road. I think that's a smart decision as opposed to, you know, keeping margins high and prices high in the short term. They just want to get as many cars out on the road as possible. Those cars feed Tesla's data engine, and that's what turns um, each of them into a fully autonomous car in the future. Yeah, Elon said on the earnings call he thinks they could achieve fully autonomous this year, is that your expectation? So we have a Monte Carlo model with a, a range of assumptions. The midpoint of our expectation is in 2024. So it'd be later than Elon says. Um, you know, in our, in our most bullish case, I think they could launch fourth quarter this year. Um, but again, the, the real thing to look at here is, you know, whether or not it's fourth quarter, whether or not it's next year or the year after that, this is an uh, amazing opportunity. We think the market for robo taxis globally could be worth, um, you know, nine to ten trillion dollars in the next decade. So it's clear why Tesla is pursuing this opportunity. And again, with their data advantage and their verticalization, they really could be a leader here. So, Tasha, that's a little bit down the line. When we talk about maybe the next year or two with Tesla, of course, when they continuously uh, cut the prices of vehicles, a lot of people are asking if there's a demand issue. Are you seeing any sign of that? So, you know, again, the story here, if you take a step back, is really that EVs are gaining share. So they, Tesla was harping on this on their earnings call recently, that you should think of them as a share of the total global auto market as opposed to just the EV sector. Because, again, in the future, it's going to be electric vehicles. So, um, you know, my partner analyst, Sam Kors, has done a lot of great work looking at the electric vehicle market. We think that there'll be 60 million units sold um, in the next five years annually. And, uh, you know, that's up uh, from, you know, single digit percentage points as a, as a percentage of auto sales today. Um, so I think that uh, Tesla here is really in the lead. They have a multi-year advantage over competitors. It's, again, that verticalization strategy that keeps them in the lead. Um, so we think on an efficiency basis uh, per, per cost for, for the price that you're paying for the car, um, you know, they're, they're still way ahead of the competition. And, uh, you know, I'd be pretty scared if I were a traditional automaker right now and I saw Tesla cutting prices, I'll tell you that, because not all of these platforms are profitable at other automakers yet. Yeah, they have some very slim margins, do those <clears throat> traditional automakers. So there are the margin concerns. There's also this group of shareholders that own a combined $1.5 billion in shares. They're concerned about something else, and that is a distracted CEO, of course, Elon Musk. They write in this letter to the board, we have grown increasingly concerned with government governance and leadership issues at the company. Tesla needs a board that will ensure that the CEO is focused on addressing its challenges. Are you concerned about Elon Musk being distracted with Twitter, SpaceX, and everything else he takes on? Well, you know, it's not a surprise to us to see him tackling many issues at once. As you mentioned, SpaceX, you know, he was one of the founders of OpenAI. Um, we, we've seen him spread out his responsibilities among his companies. And, re and really, what do, what do we have to go off of? It's his execution. Look at Tesla's progress today from five years ago. Again, it's still it's the leading company in electric vehicles. We also think so in autonomy. And I think he's a really crucial figure to actually uh, crossing that finish line to creating a fully autonomous car. Uh, so, you know, we, we um, have full confidence in him as the leader of Tesla. And in fact, we'd be we'd be more worried if he if he were stepping away from his responsibilities. Um, so, you know, I, I think that while, uh, yes, it's, it's shocking that he's able to manage this many companies at once. This isn't something that we haven't seen him do before. You're happy if he stays on board as CEO of Twitter beyond this year. 
Yeah, so you know, we, we are invested in, in Twitter and in, in our private fund here at ARC. So um, you know, I, I think that a lot of the ideas that he's put forward there um, to have, have the potential to really change the company and, and uh, particularly the payments platform aspect of things we're pretty excited about. Um, and you know, our fintech team has, has done a lot of research there. But again, I, I think going back to Tesla, you know, I, I'm not I'm not concerned with him splitting his time. Uh, we, we're we're going off of his execution here, and he's been an amazing leader. He's been he's built an auto company that's really unrivaled in its uh, autonomy and AI advantage, its software advantage, and its battery advantage. Tasha, what about the Cybertruck? Certainly, that has drummed up some excitement. Of course, it was mentioned a couple of times on the most recent earnings call. How important, or is it important at all, to the investment thesis? What I think is so interesting about Cybertruck is it's just another way that Tesla is really efficiently producing cars. Um, so, you know, the, the no need for paint or any coating, um, you know, one single piece over the body of the car. Um, it's, it's a lot cheaper to make than, say, the Model 3. Um, or at least the, the the frame of it is. So we think that you know the next generation vehicle that Tesla announced, which is going to be half the cost of the Model 3 and Y platform, that could potentially be a vehicle that looks similar to the, the design of the Cybertruck. And again, they do that because it's a, the most cost efficient way to produce these vehicles. And if you have a robo taxi fleet, um, you know, that's bringing down costs, we think that uh, an EV already makes a ton of sense for autonomy on a cost per mile basis. And this is just going to, you know, push Tesla even, even further over that edge of making an extremely efficient platform that'll lower the cost of transportation for people globally. All right, Tasha Keeney, ARK Invest Director of Investment Analysis and Institutional Strategies. Thanks so much for joining us here.